Okay, so welcome to part two. So again, we talked about enzymes and one of the key features is their active site. Um, I know I keep saying this, if I keep saying it, it's because it's important. Um, so it's, it's got the active site right here that matches a substrate. And that's the lock and key model says they match exactly. The induced fit model basically says as the substrate gets closer to the active site, the active site's shape shifts to allow the substrate and the enzyme to, to bind. And again, that shape of that enzyme is ultimately determined by the primary structure of the protein, because they are proteins, which is determined by the sequence of amino acids, which is ultimately just determined by the sequence of DNA. Okay, so we talked about enzymes and the role in metabolic pathways. And the fact that each kind of step in a reaction has an enzyme that allows us to control the different stages of, sorry, your body to control different stages of that pathway or that cycle or that chain. Um, and again, the role is basically they increase the rate of reactions, they speed up reactions, they lower the activation energy, so they, they make the reactions more likely to happen. Um, and the specific enzymes allow us to control those pathways. Um, so again, a couple other things. Enzymes catalyze reactions, so they speed them up. They're, they're substrate specific and they lower the activation energy. And we talked about the collision theory of enzyme. It's basically all a bunch of random molecules bumping into each other. Um, and we kind of talked about how this works. Don't worry about the immobilized enzymes yet. Um, talked about how activation energy is lowered in enzymes, making the reactions more likely to happen. Um, we looked at the steps, right? So the substrate collides with the active site in the right shape and orientation. That creates the enzyme substrate complex. The chemical reaction can occur and we get the products here. But notice the enzyme doesn't shift, doesn't change shape. Induced fit model basically works in a very similar way, except that the active site here changes shape to match that. Okay. Um, then we started. Sorry. We started talking about with pH temperature, substrate concentration. How can we change how these work? Um, so first is kind of this statement. Um, basically, enzymes are somewhat fragile. Um, remember back when we talked about protein folding and, and, and the shape of the protein? It's held together by intermolecular forces, hydrogen bonds, van der Waal interactions, those sorts of things. Um, with that, those bonds aren't chemical bonds. They're, they're fairly weak individually. So what that means is enzymes are affected by pH, temperature. Um, and what can those two can lead to is the protein being what we call denatured. Okay? So a denatured protein is, looks like this. Okay? And you can see the problem right away in this picture is if you change the shape of the protein, um, you change the shape of the active site right here, right? That's the active site. And with that active site ch changed, the substrate no longer fits. So what happens here is you get no reaction. Okay, it doesn't change. It doesn't catalyze that reaction anymore. The enzyme no longer works. It's denatured. It's changed shape. Um, and that can be pretty serious. There's lots of things that can cause that, but the ones we usually we talk about is a change in pH and temperature. Okay, so pH is kind of relevant in your stomach. For example, your enzymes that break down proteins in your stomach work at a very acidic pH. By the time they get to the small intestines, those same enzymes don't work anymore because the pH is wrong. All right, so one other thing you need to be able to do is draw and explain graphs of temperature, pH, and substrate concentration. 
So kind of zooming in here, this says enzyme activity. So this is basically the, the rate of reaction, okay? Um, and this is the change in temperature. So kind of here where you have, sorry, my bad non-straight line, right here, whatever volume this temperature is, is what we call the optimum, is the optimum uh, temperature. So for example, in the human body, it is approximately 36 to 37 degrees Celsius, okay? So our enzymes in our body are, are designed to work at that temperature. Now, if you lower that temperature, basically what you're doing is you're taking energy out of the system, it's colder, and these molecules move around less. Now remember, enzymes, we're all just a bunch of random reactions, right? So if those molecules are moving slower, which is especially true when the temperature is lower, then they're not going to collide and smack into each other as often. Okay, so the, so the, the idea that um, the substrate and, oops, sorry, the idea that the substrate and the enzyme up here match up doesn't happen as much when it's colder. Okay, um, now if we go the other way, and it gets too hot. Notice the drop off is pretty steep, right? Here, it denatures, right? Remember, we have the opposite problem. The enzymes will, the, the substrates and the enzymes will move around faster when it's hotter, but eventually what happens is the bonds that keep this shape, the intermolecular forces, hydrogen bonding, van der Waals interactions, and so forth, these break down the shape changes. So over here, kind of when we get over to this point, we've denatured the enzyme, okay? So the enzyme will no longer work. Um, so that's kind of the one explanation for that graph, and it's kind of all explained down here. Now pH, again, very similar idea. Here's our optimum pH, okay? So, but as you move away from that optimum pH, um, the acidity or the, the, the acidity changes. And what could, that can do is that can disrupt the um, bonds holding the shape of that enzyme. So we're right back to this thing again, right? The shape of the enzyme changes so that the active site is no longer valid. And the result is that the enzyme and the substrate don't fit, they don't match. Um, so, they, so the enzyme can no longer speed up the reaction. All right, and the very last graph here is enzyme activity and substrate concentration. So this one's pretty, should make sense. So after a while, if you increase the substrate concentration, you will increase the rate of reaction. The reaction will go faster. That makes sense because remember, we're all a bunch of chemical reactions. If I have three enzymes and the blue are the substrates, the more substrate I have, the more likely the enzyme and the substrate are gonna bump into each other. If I increase that even more, so I add even more then it's even more likely, right? So here's kind of this spot on the graph. Here's maybe this spot on the graph. But let's say I want to go really wild, and I have three. And let's say I really put, I add lots and lots of substrate, right? I want this reaction to go as fast as I can. I want to, I want to make whatever it is very, very quickly. So I add a whole bunch here. The problem is you've added all these but you haven't changed the enzymes, right? So the way I kind of ask students to think about this, you know, imagine your three enzymes and they're undergoing chemical reactions. Imagine if each substrate lined up, waiting in line to be catalyzed, right? The more substrate you add in each of these conditions, all you're ending up with 
is is more lines now here and here it's it's okay because the enzyme can still work really really fast but by the time you get over to this point it doesn't matter how many more you add it doesn't matter how fast the enzyme's working you're still going to have a ton of in, of substrates behind it waiting right what you need to do here to lower this line is add more enzyme but we're not going to talk about that Right, so the idea here, I think about this is like a cashier at a in a, a grocery store, right? Especially now with the coronavirus, imagine you know everybody buying toilet paper. If you only have three cashiers open, it doesn't matter um, how fast they go. The limitation is all the people waiting in line with the toilet paper, for example. Right, the only solution is to open more registers. But even if that's all the registers you have, it's not going to go any faster. Okay. So basically the idea here is all, all the active sites of the enzymes are full, okay? So all the active sites are full. Um, so that's kind of temperature, pH, and substrate concentration. There's some explanations down here. I think they're good. Um, so that'll help you too. Now the other two, 